Sorry folks, back again, uh, 188 uh, part 3, and my battery thing just crapped out. I checked it before I started, and I thought I had enough battery power to last through this stuff. Evidently I didn't. I'm not sure where I was, but I was talking about uh, uh, in order to you know, be an evaluator, if you will, in the state of Virginia, you have to be certified, you have to have a master's degree, uh, you look at some films and whatever, people watch you do evaluations, you watch evaluations, and then ultimately someone, uh, excuse me, ultimately someone like signs off on you and then you're certified and you can go out there and do that stuff. And of course the magistrates have a list of the persons who are certified and on and on. But what I was getting to is that the CSB that I was working for made a deal with the local hospital, Norfolk General Hospital, which is the largest hospital in our area, that the CSB, the emergency services worker, would start doing the job of the PERS people. They were the evaluators from Norfolk General. You got it? So in other words, the emergency services worker are going to start doing their job. Now, Norfolk General has two psychiatric units. They have on the sixth floor what is called a Gero psych unit. And yes, that's for older people. I can't remember exactly what the age is. I think uh, it has to be at least 55. It may be 60, but I think it's 55. So in other words, this is a unit on the sixth floor where if you're 55 or older, uh, you qualify, so to speak, to go. Uh, then they have a regular unit on the uh, eighth floor, you know, which is for everyone else, you know, who are uh, who, people who are above 18, 18 and above. Uh, that's a whole different subject, but, you know, if you're under 18, then you have to have a, an adolescent or juvenile unit or what have you, which uh, Norfolk General doesn't have. Now, here's the deal. The Virginia Code is quite clear. When people uh, came up with this, uh, the way the evaluations were done by the individual uh, uh, community services board doing them, and this little unit, emergency services, there were some rules they came up with. Now, uh, the, the, the job isn't, in the overall scheme of things, that big of a deal. Uh, in other words, a lot of uh, what those folks do are is pretty routine. However, <laughs> when it's not routine, it ain't much fun. I mean, really, it's uh, an, an emergency service worker is always pissing off someone. In other words, you have these people who are all involved here. You have the subject, as the cops would say, or the magistrate might say, the person who is being evaluated. And somebody's going to be ticked off no matter what the emergency service worker does. In other words, you might have family members who want the person detained. Uh, you might have a cop who wants the person detained. And sometimes you don't detain the person because the emergency services worker is supposed to be disinterested. And uh, oftentimes the emergency services worker can act as an advocate, if you will, for the person who's being evaluated. Because, uh, now this doesn't happen every day, but sometimes like you have an angry spouse, like a husband or a wife who wants the other person locked up so that when they try and get a divorce or something, they say, oh, so-and-so's crazy and all that kind of crap, you know. So you, the emergency services worker really acts as an advocate. They're supposed to do the evaluation, they're supposed to be disinterested, and that's the deal. Now, the code says, uh, you know, it goes through this uh, designee, uh, designee of the local community services board, examiner, blah, 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 blah. Now, it says, is able to provide an independent examination of the person, is not related by blood or marriage to the person being evaluated. Listen carefully now. Has no financial interest in the admission or treatment of the person being evaluated. Has no investment interest in the facility detaining or admitting the person under this article and except for employees of state hospitals and of the 
U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs is not employed by the facility. That's the one. Not employed by the facility. And what these people are basically saying is how objective, if you will, and how disinterested, if you will, can you be if you are detaining to someone a facility who employs you. You know what I mean? Now, what, what has happened in the past is when the uh, 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 hospital employee the PERS person, if you remember them, would go down and evaluate someone, they're really under control of the emergency room doctor. And oftentimes the uh, PERS worker, the hospital employee, would see someone and they would say, excuse me, this person isn't meeting criteria, meaning this person doesn't need to be in a hospital. And sometimes they say, hey, you need to kick this guy to the curb, you know. Could be a malingerer or whatever. And oftentimes what the doctor would say is, nah, I don't feel comfortable with this person leaving. So then the PERS person would call the community services board and ask for an evaluation by the community services board. So then the emergency services worker would go out and evaluate the person. Now, now what they've done, and it just started on the 3rd of January, is them and they, yes, those people at Norfolk Community Services Board made a deal with Norfolk General Hospital. Now, I just read you the thing where you can't be an employee and detain to that facility. Obviously, conflict of interest there. Now, somehow, they seemingly weaseled around this. How they did that, I don't know. And even if they legally did it, whatever that interpretation is, they surely violated the spirit of everything. Now, the emergency services workers were told, uh, number one, they had a mandatory uh, uh, Norfolk General Hospital orientor uh, orientation, excuse me, that they had to go to. Then they had to go to Norfolk General, the hospital, and get an employee badge. And the badge says, Sentara, crisis counselor, uh, something, slash Norfolk Community Service Board, slash PERS, or something like that. And these people, the, my former co-workers, they're going to be doing the evaluations in Norfolk General Hospital Emergency Room. Now, my question is, how is it that you must go through the Norfolk General Orientation, you must wear a Norfolk General Hospital Sentara badge, and you aren't an employee? Well, prior to my quitting, I asked the Chief Magistrate, I posed the same question to the Chief Magistrate in Norfolk. I said, here's what they're planning on doing. Can you do that? He said, of course you can't. And there's no way you can do that. And if it ever went to court, they would say, no, you can't do that. So, basically, I ended up quitting a job that I thoroughly enjoyed and liked. I ended up... Uh, no longer having my limited social life with my former co-workers eh, over this. Now, I'm 71 years old, and some people might say, gee, well, you needed to retire anyway. But in a way, I thought it was kind of cool that some of my age was still doing this kind of work, you know, running around the streets, going to cop calls, and going to the ERs, and doing all that kind of stuff. It was a job I, I, I truly liked. It was not a fun job. Uh, but I had developed many relationships with the emergency room doctors and nurses, the cops, the schools, and, you know, all the other people who you're seeing pretty regularly. But that's why I quit. That's why I quit my job. It was, uh, uh, I, I just couldn't do that anymore, the way that uh, the unit was being treated. And as I said, um, 
But let me go to real quickie on this, and I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. Hot, Hondel would say, peace out, gentlemen.